Hey guys and gals, hope everyone's doing well. So I am here in my garage today getting ready to do my first oil change on my Porsche 911 C2S 991.2. And the reason I'm doing this video is I've seen a few oil change videos online on YouTube and in the forums, and I have yet to find one specifically for somebody doing one on a 991.2S. I have seen a few good ones out there that are on other 911 Carrera models, but um, I'm sure there's people out there like me that would just like to see one specific to their model. And even though the procedure is virtually the same, I thought I would put together my own little video. So a little history on my vehicle. I've had it for about seven months. I picked it up with about 5,500 miles on it. And I was told that it had just been serviced. I assumed that it was because I have a uh, receipt showing that it was serviced at one of the Porsche dealers. So this vehicle uh, did have a service at 5,500 miles thereabout, and I'm up to about 8,000 miles. And even though I know I'm well within, uh, you know, it, it, too far within the, the time needed to get another oil change, I figured it can't hurt. Um, I, I also know that I was interested in doing an oil analysis very early on in the life of the vehicle. So I, I picked up a, um, or I ordered a Blackstone kit so that I could send the oil sample. And uh, well, basically here's my, uh, all the stuff I'll be using. I have the Mobile One Zero W40. And I'm just gonna go through the stuff that I have. Um, I have this really nifty oil catch pan that fits nicely under the vehicle. It pours into here, you can cap it up, and then you can dispose of it through here uh, later on. I have this nifty funnel that actually screws into the oil uh, reservoir or, or where you fill the oil on the car. I picked up the Sun Coast oil change kit, which consists of a Porsche brand uh, oil filter. It's actually, the brand is Mahle, M-A-H-L-E. I have the necessary socket extension and 36 millimeter uh, socket here. I spent money needlessly on this tool to remove the uh, oil drain plug. I know that you could probably do it with just a screwdriver as I've seen it done, but I figured why not? I wanna make sure I have all the right tools, all the necessary tools. I have a couple of trim tools because I know I'm gonna need to pop off some things once I get underneath the fans there when I take everything apart. Uh, the Suncoast kit came with uh, an O-ring and uh, a, an oil uh, drain plug. I uh, got a couple of uh, latex gloves. Um, actually, these aren't latex. These are, uh, oh, I don't even know what they're called, uh, but you know what I'm talking about. Um, I also have a torque wrench and it's already set to uh, about 19 foot pounds, uh, which I understand that's close to the 25 uh, Newton, uh, whatever the measurement is that uh, you need to tighten the oil filter uh, cap on uh, back on once you take it apart. So uh, I also have this little uh, kind of fold out mat that I can lay on uh, while I'm down there, even though I don't plan to be down there very long. And I also have the race ramps. The car's already jacked up onto those race ramps. So I will be using that to give me a little extra clearance because this wouldn't get underneath the uh, oil drain plug without lifting it up a little bit. I do have a jack, but um, I thought it would just be a little easier to do it this way. I also realized that by elevating the rear end, it may drain out more oil than what would normally be drained out if the car was level. I'm not concerned about that. I, I figure it really can't hurt. I do have adequate oil. I have a total of, of 10 quarts. I don't intend to use all of that. I think what I'm going to do is start by putting in about seven and a half quarts um, and then uh, getting the car off the ramps, seeing where it, the oil level shows on the internal gauge and then add oil from there. So um, this is where I'm starting out. Um, 
this is the all the gear I'm going to be using, all the equipment. It's not very complicated. I know this is a real easy DIY. I haven't done an oil change in a long time, but it's simple, I know, and uh, hopefully um, somebody that has a vehicle like this that's wanting to take this on for the first time will find this video helpful, and, uh, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Anyways, um, we'll get to the uh, oil change in just a moment. Okay, so before we get started, it's going to be helpful to identify exactly where the oil drain plug is. So, um, I've got this light down here so that we can just show you. I'm going to zoom in and you can see right there, right about in the center of the screen, in that little round thing, that's the oil drain plug. Interestingly, with these 991.2s, they've gone to this polymer plastic uh, oil drain plug and pan. They say that it's better, stronger, so I trust the engineers at Porsche. Um, but anyway, so this this little attachment there goes right in there. Whoops. That, that's where this goes. I'm not going to drain it just yet, but it goes right in here. And when I'm ready to un open it up, I'll turn it and drain it into the pan. But before we do that, I'm going to take care of some things up top first. Okay, so this is the part where I'm going to have an interesting time doing this for my first time after I get that dragonfly out of here. So I know the first thing I'm supposed to do is pop this thing off here. I've never done it before, but I've seen it done. So I'm not sure what the purpose of this thing is, but I'm going to go ahead and, and pop it off as everybody does let's see okay i see there there we go i'm gonna put it down someplace where i know that, that it it goes like this so i don't put it the other way around just in case i'm gonna lay that down and then now i'm gonna start pulling these panels off so it comes off pretty easy just like i've seen in all the videos nothing too surprising here all right this, I guess, goes through there. All right, so far, so far, so good. Let's see. Okay, nice and easy. I'm gonna lay this down here. All right, so we've got the two fans here, and you'll notice there's these little connector plugs, one over here, one over here. So I'm gonna start by disconnecting those. They look pretty easy to disconnect. Let's see. You know what? I, I may actually use one of these trim tools to pop it off because that might make it a little easier to disconnect. Maybe not. Let me see. Oh, I see there's one back there. Okay, hold on. Let's see. First time is always. Oh, it came off. Perfect. Okay. Hopefully I didn't break it off, but that's all right. There we go. So this is the left fan. I'm gonna make sure I, I keep it noted as the left fan. All right, let's see. I'm going to leave that part there. I'm going to carefully pry this thing off. This is the best tool I have for that. Okay, so this one, not attached, comes off nice and easy. I'm gonna see if this, okay, so this one, lift this fan lifts up, oh, nice and easy there, okay. Let's see if I can pop it off the back here just as easy. Oh yeah. Okay, so this is the right fan, so you can follow me here. I'm gonna place it down here on the right side. So I remember it's the right fan. And now that I know how easy it comes off, this one should come off hopefully just as easy. Let's see. Yeah, and then this pulls out. There we go. This little round thing here goes in that hole just the same way on the, on the right. All right, side. so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop these things off because I gotta take this, this, uh... there we go. That one pops off. And then this one over here should hopefully be just as easy. 
There we go. It didn't break anything. I love it. All right, now, next part. This thing is supposed to just lift right up. Let's see if it happens. Oh, yeah. Oh, forgot this part here. You got to pull this wire out right here. I feel like I'm a pro at doing this probably because I've watched the video so many times. All right, so you can see in here, there's the oil filter that I got to take off. And uh, in a moment, we're going to get to that. All right. All right. So as one of my favorite Porsche Internet personalities, Mr. McGrath refers to as the money shot. Uh, here it comes. All right. too much oil. Um, I'm going to do one more thing. I have my catch bottle here. I'm going to make sure I fill this thing up. This is the catch bottle for the uh, Blackstone. Oh, got it Ooh, plenty full. continued all right the next step here is to loosen the oil filter cap and you can see I've already wrapped some paper towel around it to catch any of the drippings there I'm just gonna loosen it up some There we go. Can probably do the rest by hand. And I will pick it up. Try to catch the, uh, the filter in some paper towel. Let's see how I can do this neatly. Here we go. Uh, okay, not too bad. Not too bad. I set this down. All right, you can see what that looks like in there. I will uh, just soak up a little bit of that excess uh, oil from the bottom there. And I'm also gonna make sure before I screw the uh, oil filter and the cap back on that I pull that extra um, paper towel out of the way. We don't wanna get that thing caught in there. So before replacing the filter, I'm gonna check. This is the uh, existing filter, the one that I just pulled out. You could see the, uh, the model number, same brand filter, the M-A-H-L-E Mali. And then here's the new one. And you could see that the, the numbers there are the same. So we have a matching filter. I, need, I just need to make sure that the numbers, the, the part with the markings, see there's a side without markings and a side with markings. The part with the, mount, the markings goes down into the uh, oil filter compartment and the cap goes over the other side. So that's what I'm going to do next. So here's the new filter going in, label side down and it's supposed to take a little force. There we go. Nice and snug. All right. All right, the next step is replacing this O-ring here. So 
make sure to replace it exactly where it's currently sitting. So I'm going to carefully remove it. This is the old one. I'm going to I'm going to put a little bit of fresh motor oil on the new one. Um, they say just to cover that with some fresh motor oil. I'm going to go ahead and work it on to the back on to where it belongs. there. Next I'm going to clean up this mess, wipe down the oil cap, and make sure it's seated properly, and then I'm going to put it back on. Okay, so since there's no dirty oil around here, I uh, removed all the, the uh, paper towels from around there, and I'm going to work this thing back on. Make sure that it seats properly. You know what? It doesn't hurt to double check that that O-ring is up. Now, let me just double check for peace of mind. It never hurts to have that extra peace of mind. It is properly seated. All right. Some people might laugh at me saying that that was obvious that it was already on, but I like to be super careful. So now I'm starting to put that in by hand. Make sure that there's nothing obstructing it from getting on properly. There we go. So, I have my torque wrench set to, let's see, let me pause for a moment. All right, I'm back. So I've got the torque wrench set to 18 and a half foot-pounds. So we're just gonna go little by little till we get there. I don't know if you saw, I lowered the spoiler because it gives me a little. There we go. There we go, 18 and a half foot-pounds. And I'm gonna now go down and see how the oil drain process is going before adding the new oil. So we've reached a point where it appears we are just drip, drip, dripping out. Um, which to me indicates that it's probably not a bad time to go ahead and cap that off and start putting in some oil from the top. I'll give it a little bit more time just to get any of that excess oil out. But I realize we're just talking a few drops here. And after vacuuming up the whatever crud was down there, now begins the process of reassembly. So, This snaps on, this snaps on there, this fits nice and snug, no wiggle room there.
Remember that this little round thing goes to get this thing out. Probably I should connect that first. Let's see. Looks like it can only go one way, which is a good thing. And then this pops in here. And this thing slides Hmm. Interesting. This. Let's see. Let's take that off. See how this part goes. Okay, that part goes there. And then, interestingly, I don't know how this would have been mounted that way before. I do recall that this was not connected to that when I got it in. So maybe we're gonna leave it the same way we found it. get this right. Okay, that goes there. These two guys go here. And that's it. This was just laying there before. Now the other one. Again, the little round part goes in that hole there. Let's see if we can, whoa. Let's see if we can uh, connect this. Gets, okay, that clicked in there, and then you want to make sure that everything, this goes there, these go there, these things spin well. goes on. You gotta slip all this through. Hmm. Something doesn't look right. To me. That was always there like that. Alright, let's hmm. am I missing something? No.
this way. This piece pops through that little hole in the back and gets wrapped around here. And All right, capiche. I realized that took me a lot longer than it needed to, but I wanted to be sure. All right, next to fill the oil. All right, I'm gonna start with the five quarts. So to make sure I get exactly seven and a half and then work from there, I'm going to I'm going to take this container and fill it to the halfway mark and make sure that both this container and the other container have exactly the same amount. Once I know they have exactly the same amount, then I know there's two and a half quarts in each one. And from there, I will put the other two and a half quarts in and we'll go from there. All right, these look to be nearly identically filled. So I assume there's two and a half quarts and we will go from there. All right, so now we have seven and a half quarts of fresh oil poured in. I'm gonna double check the specifications before I go ahead and cap this off, lower it from the ramps and start the engine and see what the uh, electronic dipstick says. Okay, after double checking my sources online, I decided to add another half a quart, making it eight quarts to start off and we'll see where we land once we get the uh, engine running so i got the car started off the ramps and the engine's been running for a couple of minutes i just went up the street uh, very low speed low rpms just to kind of get things flowing when i go here go to oil measurements this is what I get right now. I'd imagine that's gonna change once uh, I start driving around a little bit. All right, after adding another 1.3 quarts on top of the original eight, that being 9.3 quarts now, I am about three quarters of the way between the minimum and the maximum line on the um, correct oil level. So I could probably put in maybe, maybe a quarter of a quart if I wanted to get to that top line. Maybe a little less just to be safe. So here's where we're at. It's late. I've, uh, I've put in 9.3 quarts of oil into this car. It was really straightforward. It was pretty easy. I, I think I spent more time kind of preparing the camera shots and just trying to be super careful, but I think if I had to do it over again right now, I could probably do it in about 
a quarter of the time it took me the first time. Uh, but it is really indeed quite simple. Um, for me, the parts that were a little bit tricky were when I was putting in the, the drain plug, uh, you know, I, I couldn't really get the sense that it was clicking in. I just had to kind of go on the assumption that it was in and I just had to be happy with that. It, it felt snug, but there, there wasn't a kind of like positive feedback mechanism that allowed me to be sure that it was like clicked in and locked in. But aside from that, um, you know, I, first of all, I, I got what I set out to do, which was to obtain that Blackstone sample. Um, this right here, this is going to go to Blackstone. I'm going to get an oil analysis and find out what, what this vehicle is like, what the oil is like, what the oil condition is like, what the, perhaps it can tell me a little bit about the engine condition based on the oil report. Um, and, uh, and because it's late, I don't want to work on this anymore, but I do want to get that, that one little bit of oil level. I want to get it up to the top line of the um, normal oil level, the acceptable oil level. And it looks like I'm probably about a fifth of a quart off. So tomorrow I'm just going to take it for a little drive, see if I still get the same reading. And if I do, I'm going to top it off with just a tad more oil. I want to get it to that top line and maintain it there. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, I'll try to... Uh, Put one more video um, showing that because I, I would love to show that I do reach that maximum fill line without going over. So anyways, this has really been great. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, I hope that it's been fun for you, informative for you, and that maybe you're going to do this for your car now that you've seen this video. Uh, although I know there's a lot of videos out there that probably have done a much better job at this than I have. So anyways, I uh, hope it helped. If you do, please be sure to, if, if it did help, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe. I love comments. I love answering questions um, about anything, including, you know, what I use, the, the gear, the funnels, the, the, the sockets, the lights, the, you name it. Happy to talk about any of that stuff, all right? Anyways, take care. Talk to you soon. There may be one little bit more bit added to this video, and if so, um, stay tuned. All right, so it's morning. I started the car up, took it for a little drive, and it now appears to be a little bit closer to that maximum line under uh, the correct oil level. So I may just, just leave this thing alone for now, um, drive it around for a couple weeks, and if I feel it's necessary, I'll, I may put in like a quarter cup of oil um, just to get it a little closer to that max line level, but I probably don't need to, and I'm sure many people would recommend just leave it alone. Um, but anyways, so that's where we're at. All is good, and on to the next project.